Okay, we have written another integral. We've got the integral of zero to infinity of e to the minus x to the fourth dx. Now, the first thing I noticed about this one was just this exponent that looks so much like the Gaussian integral. For the Gaussian integral, the only difference, this is gonna be e minus x squared dx, and this is actually equal to square root of pi over two. So when I first did this, what I did was a u substitution for x squared in order to kind of get it in this form. The only thing is you do the u substitution, you take the derivative and you get some other stuff. It didn't really work out that nicely for me. So what I want to try instead on this, instead of substituting u equal to x squared, I'm going to do u equal to x to the fourth. Then before I take the derivative, let's just raise both sides to the one fourth power just to isolate x. We get x equal to u to the one fourth. And then I'll go ahead and take a derivative. So for dx, we're gonna have, this is gonna become a power rule, 1 fourth u minus 3 fourths du. So now let's just go ahead with this. So first, look at our bounds for infinity. When you have infinity to the fourth, that's still infinity. And then you plug zero in, well then our lower bound's still gonna be zero. Then for this here, it's just gonna transform into e to the minus u. And then for dx, I'm gonna kinda of go out of order. So for our dx value, we have this right here. I'll take the 1 fourth, and bring it up front, and then we'll have this other stuff. I'm gonna write it like this, u minus three over four du. But now for this thing here, this is perfectly set up to use the gamma function. Okay, so we have our formula for the gamma function over here. It's a little confusing with the variables, right? The integral is with respect to t, and then our input into the gamma function is x. So like actually, whatever this value is here on the exponent, Whatever the value is that we have here on the exponent of the t, that's gonna be our value for the gamma function. The gamma function is an extension of the factorial. So sometimes like for integer values, for positive integer values for x, we could just go ahead and calculate this with the factorial. There are some other values that we can calculate. There's some other values that are difficult to calculate. There's some values where it's undefined. Now coming back to our integral, this right here is exactly what we have here, just a different variable. So what I wanna do is adjust this exponent on the u to get it in this form. So what I could do for 3 fourths, I can just write this, I can just rearrange this and write this as 1 fourth minus 1, since that's still minus 3 fourths. And then doing it that way, the input into our gamma function is just going to be this 1 fourth right here. So the value of this whole thing, it turns out, is going to be just gamma of 1 over 4. So putting this together, we can write this as 1 fourth times gamma of 1 fourth. Now, it's not that easy to get a nice value for gamma of 1 fourth. If we had something else, we might be able to work with it using Euler's reflection. If we had a half here, we could do that, but with 1 fourth, it's kind of a problem. But one thing we can do is we can actually use this one formula. We have this that, again, relates it to the factorial, where we can say for gamma of n plus 1, this is going to be the same thing as n times gamma of n. So notice this right here is like the same thing as what we have right here, where n is going to be equal to 1 fourth. So doing this in reverse, going this way, we can say this is gonna be the same thing as 1 fourth plus one, or gamma of 5 fourths. And again, this here is difficult to reduce, so for my final solution, we just leave it as gamma of five over four. Okay, there you have it. Thanks everyone for watching today. Have a good day.